So hello students, in this video we will discuss about the data converter architecture and before we actually begin, uh, I just want to talk about some digital data representation and I just want to bring out about uh, different ways by which uh, a, di a decimal data can be uh, represented in digital form. So here is a picture which uh, I will just copy and then put it here. So a digital data can be represented in many different forms uh, like in, so as in this case uh, we have a binary form and uh, later followed by this thermometer uh, coded form. So this thermometer coded form is, uh, is the one that we are going to use, just a second. Uh, So this is a particular form which you might be already familiar with it and uh, the next one is a thermometer coded form and uh, basically uh, in this case the number of digits that is required is a bit higher. So we basically need um, say for example uh, we use an n bit to represent uh, a digital data then the amount of bit that is required to represent a thermometer or equivalent thermometer code would be like 2 to the power n minus 1 okay. So those are the number of bits that are required in order to represent the equivalent thermometer code for a binary code of a specific length of n. Okay. And uh, the other way around is uh, the gray code and again as we know that the, in the case of a gray code uh, between different uh, increments or, or between uh, different data representation uh, the data or the value of 1 would be incremented only once okay. So, so which means that when you just compare uh, the code of 0, 0, 0 with 0, 0, 001 there is only one bit actually makes a change and similarly when we move from a data of 1 to data of 2 there is only one change in the bit okay. So this is something that uh, one could use whenever uh, we apply a kind of gradually varying input okay. So whenever we have a DAC and uh, you just want to represent in terms of a gradual uh, waveforms then this kind of uh, uh, digital coding would be uh, much uh, helpful than the other codings okay. But anyhow uh, we will not discuss about this or nor the two's, two's complement architecture or, or the architecture that uses two's complement but rather we will focus only on the first two what is the binary the other one is the thermometer coded uh, architectures yeah. So but uh, nevertheless I will just want to talk about a little bit information about this two say, uh, two's complement uh, number system where you could see that exactly at the midway okay so uh, sorry uh, two's complement yeah yeah so uh, this is uh, like yeah i'm not Sorry for this, uh, yeah, okay. So in the case of binary code, uh, one thing that you can observe is that uh, if you just try to draw a line of symmetry across this uh, particular binary number system, you see that the, that the intersection between the third and the fourth will have a kind of mirroring structure, okay. Uh, where in this mirroring structure, uh, what happens is that there is a kind of inversion that exists, okay. So inversion in the sense like when you compare the data of 3 with respect to data of 4, it is an exact inversion of what we have okay and similarly one could compare the data of 2 with 5 and the other way like 1 to 6 and 0 to 7. So this is the kind of uh, property that this binary number system has and the thermometer uh, coding system generally has some sort of increment in its value as we move higher and higher the value of the decimal equivalent value. Okay? So those are the two. Uh, number systems that we are going to use in order to build the data or, or basically the DAC architecture. Yeah. So now let me just uh, sp speak about the architecture that is being built by making use of those two number systems. Um, now before we actually talk about that uh, I just want to emphasize like there exist a lot of different architectures uh, and each of these architectures in general differ either by speed or the chip area or profit efficiency 
or the achievable accuracy in those aspects, they differ from each other. Uh, so, in the case of a DAC, uh, uh, we have something like resistor string or R2R DAC and uh, current steering DACs. Okay? So, each of these uh, architectures uh, basically have their own properties. Okay? So, either in terms of area or either in terms of speed. Okay? So, that is how we could categorize those architectures. Okay? And this is a very general statement that I am making. And uh, the next thing is that uh, one could classify the DAC architecture, even though this classification is not there for your uh, uh, syllabus, uh, just because uh, we are not dealing with something like uh, a voltage or something like a, a resistor string architecture or uh, R to R architecture. Uh, but I believe that it would be worth noting that there are different modes by which these architectures can be created. So, I will just briefly list out those uh, modes of operation by which the DAC architecture could function and later we will just look into a specific architecture which is known as the current steering architecture which is the, the type of architecture right now uh, is most widely used okay? and due to which we will be focusing only on that. But rather, uh, just by focusing only on that, I just want to bring a small bit of uh, different other modes of operation that could exist in a kind of DAC architecture. So, without further ado, let me try to talk about that. So, so I would classify the data converter or basically the DAC architecture which is based on uh, different modes of operation. And under this category, uh, we basically have three categories uh, which is uh, three different modes of operation. Uh, one is known as a voltage mode. The second one is known as a current mode and the third one is something known as charge redistribution mode. Now, let me just give a brief uh, overview. So, in the case of voltage uh, mode architecture, uh, what happens is that the elemental uh, value. So, what I really mean by this elemental value is something which is related to the VLSV, okay? so uh, our LSV quantity. Now, this LSV quantity, if it is a voltage source or if it is a kind of voltage component, we call that architecture that utilizes uh, those voltage component to build the analog output, we call it as a voltage mode uh, architecture. Okay? So, here in this case, um, the elemental values are defined by the voltage levels. Okay. Now, uh, a simple uh, example of this is nothing but it's a, a resistor string architecture where in the case of a resistor string, uh, what we do is that we generally try to have a string of resistors and, uh, and each of these uh, nodes will have different voltages across them. Okay. So, in a way that each of these elements represents, sorry for that. Yeah. So each of the voltage drop across uh, the resistors will be a value which is equivalent to VLSV. Okay. So probably I have to add one more. Yeah. Okay. So this is a very uh, a simple statement that I am doing here. So what I really mean here is that the voltage drop across this is basically taken as a VLSB quantity and uh, in order to create an output voltage, we try to sum up these voltage drops to, to create a particular value of analog value for a digital input okay? and that is how uh, the architecture of resistor string is being created which works based on the voltage mode or which works based on the VLSB quantities that are being generated using these elements. Okay? Yeah. So, in the case of a current steering DAC architecture. Uh, which is the one that we are going to discuss. 
the elemental values are defined by a current value. And that's the certain difference between the voltage uh, mode and the current mode architectures. Okay. And finally, we have something known as charge redistribution mode. And in the case of a charge re redistribution mode architectures, uh, it, it is uh, something that we will be dealing with charges. Okay. And uh, basically, these architectures are used with switch capacitor elements. And we know that these capacitors in general is meant to store the charges. Okay. And one can also visualize these uh, charge redistribution mode architecture as also a kind of uh, voltage mode architecture just because we know that these capacitors in, in turn tries to store these uh, charges as capacitive voltages. Right. So, so anyhow, nevertheless, uh, it is just a, a kind of uh, information that I just want to share. But our main focus of this particular syllabus is only on this architecture, which is uh, basically built by making use of this elemental values that are defined by the current levels. Okay. Yeah. So, we will be looking across that, which is known as uh, current steering uh, structure. But before I really do this, um, as I said, I am just going to talk about the DAC architecture that are based on the digital values, right? And these digital values can be either, just a second, uh, yeah. So these digital values uh, can be either a binary data or it can be a kind of thermometer coded. So now let us look across a generic architecture of, uh, of a DAC. Uh, which is uh, built by making use of this uh, binary coded uh, structure. The other one is uh, the thermometer coded structure, which is a generic architecture. And the elemental values in those general or generic architecture can be either a voltage level or it can be a current level or it can be a charge level. Okay? So, we will just look across each of these things in a more general way and later um, we will try to replace those uh, elemental values with the current values when we discuss about the current steering DAC. Okay, so, hope that uh, you are clear with this. So, let me just begin with the discussion of binary weighted uh, DAC architecture. So, in this case, the reference elements. Okay, so uh, this is a term uh, which I will just explain graphically. But as of now, we'll just uh, assume that there is a reference element, and each of these reference elements are binary weighted. Okay, and uh, let me just show it graphically. And then later, I will just talk about uh, the equation that helps us to identify its output. Okay, so just a second, I am just trying to uh, copy the picture and then paste it here. Yeah, so as you could able to see that. Uh, uh, there is a reference element and these reference elements are being uh, shown as a kind of uh, inverted triangle and uh, these inverted triangles are being binary weighted which means that uh, when you just look across the LSB quantity which is the lowest bit, uh, you could see that the weight of this uh, reference element is just A0. Okay? And when you move on to the next one, the weight of the second element would be 2 to the power 1, which is nothing but 2 times that of A0. So, in a way, as we move towards the MSB quantity, uh, the weight is being binary weighted. Okay? So, each of these elements are being binary weighted. So, say for example, you have N equals to 3, then 
you basically have to have three elemental uh, uh, three reference elements and each of these three reference elements can be denoted here this a naught can be anything it can be a charge or a voltage or it can be a current okay so we'll just talk about it when we discuss about it okay so here in this case uh, let, let us assume that the, the that the bit that we try to apply is x naught and that is being amplified by this quantity and being added and again the next digit would be binary weighted by 2 times that of a naught and that's been fed and uh, the the bit that drives is given as a1 or uh, x1 and the next one will have 2 to the power 2 which is basically 4 times that of a naught okay yeah and again it's been added to these things so we basically have three digital data and these three digital data are being driven through the uh, reference elements which have been binary weighted and the output is taken as the weighted sum of these quantities as something like x or x of a okay where a denotes the analog uh, output but sometimes uh, you will also find that the that these values will be generally having some sort of error and that error is labeled as offset error by adding this uh, the small offset difference okay so which means that when all of these bits are being applied with a value of 0 0 0 still the output will not be equal to exactly 0 but rather there will be some sort of offset value right and that offset value is generated by the quantity which is uh, a sub OS okay or offset or a times that of the offset value okay yeah so hope that you are clear with this and this is known as the binary weighted and I just want to uh, replicate or uh, the same in terms of an expression so here I have defined a specific value of uh, n of t okay so this is for a specific time uh, it's just the time parameter when you are trying to sample uh, the digital data or, when, or whenever the digital data comes at a particular time and that is where we account this particular n times t okay otherwise uh, we and we also assume that this uh, digital data comes in a periodic fashion so this time t denotes the period interval and it depends on what period we have attained a particular value of digital data to this uh, DAC architecture and uh, that could be written in a symbolic way or so in a, in, a, in a mathematical expression way as something like offset value and then this is the elemental value which is a naught and that has to be binary weighted right so each of these quantities has to be binary weighted so so it can be rewritten as 2 to the power n minus 1 which is the msv bit and uh, since a naught is appearing in all these expressions I just try to pull out this a naught in common and I just try to sum up all other remaining bits okay, n minus 2 and all the way to 2 plus 1 yeah. okay so this is something like uh, where, wherein we can uh, apply the mathematical term right and I also want to uh, multiply these binary weights with the data that is coming in Okay, so these are the data in and if this particular data say for example the MSV bit is equal to 0 then this value has to be rounded to a value of 0 right so what we do is that each of these binary weights has to be multiplied with the corresponding digital data that comes into the architecture so in a way that I have to multiply each of these things to with the corresponding value of x quantity and over here it would be x1 and over here this would be multiplied by a factor of x0 okay so you may basically have n digital data over here okay S sorry that I, I forgot to uh, write it along with this numbers but it generally has to be multiplied with the corresponding binary data clear these binary weights yeah, so this is how the binary weighted uh, DAC architecture works and now let us focus on the thermometer coded DAC architecture. Um, okay, uh, I, I am 
I am assuming that you have understood, but in a way that if you have not understood uh, that what I am trying to really tell, uh, I could uh, explain the same concept with an example. Let us assume some sort of uh, voltage uh, we have and we are working with n that is equal to 3 and these a naughts are uh, something known as a VLSB quantity. In case if I am assuming that this uh, DAC architecture is being working on what is known as a voltage mode uh, operation. Okay. So, in that case these A naughts would then be represented by VLSB and we know that this VLSB is nothing but V reference divided by 2 to the power n and since the value of n that we have chosen is equal to 3 this would end up and if I chose the value of V ref to be equal to 5 volt then one could write it as 5 divided by 2, 2 to the power 3 which is 8 that is equal to 0.625 volt okay? and that is where the A naught value gets in. And now say for example you have uh, some specific value of binary data uh, where B equals to 101 and you want to convert this into an analog signal based on these structures. So uh, and we also assume that uh, for simplicity that this offset value which is A of yeah, so which is A sub OS is equal to 0 volt and due to which there is no offset when you when we have all of these digital data as being done to 0 we have an output that is equal to 0 and that is what we mean by this offset value okay, being equal to 0. Now when we have such kind of binary data then the output that we would expect as x of A can be returned as something like 0.625 which is the value of the A naught that, that is defined here multiplied with the binary weights. right? So, we know that the binary weights of the topmost bit is equal to 2 to the power 2 or the binary weight of the second one is 2 to the power 1 and the last one is 2 to the power 0 and each of these has to be multiplied by the corresponding digital data that we have. right? So, if I label this first for, uh, for the MSB bit as, as x n minus 1 or basically it is x of 2, this would be x of 1 and this would be x of naught. Okay. So, each of these data has to be multiplied in this way. Okay. And now uh, for a binary data that is equal to 101, you apply these appropriate values across these x to x naught digital data and in a way you end up having 0.625 into which is 4 and uh, since because x1 is equal to 0, we have this entire quantity being taken as 0 and the last bit since, since it is equal to 1, we have a 1 over here and so all of these data would then uh, add up to a decimal value of 5 multiplied with 0.625. Okay. So, so collectively they end up having a result which is equal to 1.125 volt. Hope that you are clear with this uh, binary weighted architecture. And now that we just move on to what is known as a thermometer coded architecture. So, let me begin with this uh, discussion of yeah, so uh, sorry, I am just keep uh, stepping out and on and off. Uh, the, the point is that uh, I, I did not talk about uh, the uh, the advantages and the disadvantages of these uh, binary weighted architecture, right? Uh, yeah. So we just collectively put uh, things together. Now, when you just uh, carefully look here, the total sum of all these weights, okay? When we just add up all these weights that I have here, when we add them together, the total value would, would then be equal to. Uh, 2 to the power n minus 1 times that of a naught. Okay. So, this is the data that I would get when all of these digital data are equal to 1, 1, 1, 1 all the way okay. and we are not including this uh, offset value here and that total sum of all these weights will sum up to a value which is equal to 2 to the power n minus 1 times that of a naught. Okay. So, let me just try to put it uh, in a very nice way so that uh, 
So, the total sum of all weights is 2 to the power n minus 1 into a naught. Okay. And uh, in this case, the, the elements to implement the multiplication and the addition operation uh, may be uh, created by using some sort of uh, current sources and the resistors okay, or some sort of capacitors. So, the, so, what I really mean here is that this particular structure uh, where we have a multiplication factor as well as the addition structure. So, each of these structures can be built by making use of some resistors or some sort of current sources that they actually when they mix together they create these multiplication factor as well as the addition factors here. Okay. Yeah. So, now let us look across the uh, the disadvantage of this uh, binary weighted architecture. So, in this case, uh, you could see that each of these elements are being binary weighted, which means that if the value of n is large, okay, then what happens is that the MSB bit has to have a very large uh, structure in order to create this 2 to the power n minus 1 times that of a naught. Okay. So, so, this is something like uh, one has to consider uh, as, uh, as a kind of quantity that tries to create a value that is equal to 2 to the power n minus 1 times that of a naught. Okay? It is not just the multiplication that we are talking. So, the in, a single quantity has to produce this value. Okay? So, that could be a resistor or that could be anything that it does in order to create this particular value. Yeah, so this is something that one has to concern when the number of bits binary data n goes higher and higher. Okay, and uh, again, a mismatch. Okay, so a mismatch in the value of a naught. Say for example, uh, a particular a naught is mismatched uh, from the nominal value. Then the difference between the data that is produced by having a value of zero one. Uh, say for example, I have a mismatch in this particular data. So there will be certainly a, a huge difference when this data is added and when this data is not added. Okay, when we have a corresponding bit, it gets added or it gets not added rather. Okay, yeah. So this creates a very huge um, mismatch, and the circuit is pretty much sensitive to mismatch errors. Okay, so any mismatch that encountered in any of these uh, inverted triangles will create a, a certainly a large impact at the output. But there is a certain advantage in this case. So, one such advantage is that one could use the binary data directly in order to drive these uh, architectures. Okay. So, the binary data can be applied directly in order to drive these architectures to get an output. And that is that is something that we need to uh, also have as a kind of, kind of uh, advantage when we go for a, a binary weighted uh, architecture. Okay. So, now uh, let me just Focus on. Um, just looking for my mouse pointer. Yeah. The next type of architecture, which is known as the thermometer coded architecture. Now, in the case of a thermometer coded architecture, uh, the reference elements okay, are in general or equally weighted. This is something uh, is quite different from what we have discussed for a binary weighted uh, architecture, where the reference elements are binary weighted, whereas in this case, every element will have the same weight. Okay. And, uh, just because it requires uh, a same weighted uh, uh, reference element, um, 
it also needs an extra circuit. We need to pay something extra for it, right? So, so in short, it requires a converter, which is nothing but a binary to thermometer. encoder circuit okay which tries to convert this n bit of binary data to 2 to the power n minus 1 data okay. yeah so certainly uh, this is one of the major concern when we go for a thermometer coded architecture okay and let me just try to put the things uh, pictorially uh, by taking an example or by showing the structure graphically first and then later we'll just talk about the uh, the expression based on this structure and finally we end up this discussion of thermometer coded architecture with its advantage and disadvantage yeah so now we just begin with this uh, symbolic representation as you could see that each of these reference elements are having the same weight okay there is no certainly there is no uh, difference between those reference elements so i use the same element to recreate everything and the data that is driving these inputs okay or not the n but it is the thermometer coded okay yeah so one could write the output x a as something like a kind of expression which is returned as again this n denotes a particular instant of time okay and uh, this is an offset error where a naught we have and it is just a summation of each individual elements right uh, which is basically based on uh, the factor okay yeah so hope that you are clear with this uh, and uh, I would advise you to just revisit the reason why we wrote this uh, expression by looking into the differences okay so clearly in order to represent 7 i need a 7 bits of ones okay so so we need uh, each of these elements to be equally weighted and that's the reason why we we go for it okay yeah so it's just the summation of each individual components that we have and depending on the value of uh, input that we we fed in uh, we would get an output so now we'll just uh, take a small example of it say for example you have uh, an n value that is equal to 3 again and we'll just choose the same binary data which is equal to uh, 101 and i'm going to assume that this architecture is basically a voltage mode it, it's operated based on the voltage mode operation and due to which the value of this a naught which is nothing but the vlsv is equal to equal to 0.625 volt and let us try to recreate the same based on this right yeah so now the this binary data is equal to having a value of 5 right and the equivalent uh, data uh, which is nothing but uh, the thermometer code which in this case is represented as c is equal to uh, we basically have 5 so which means that 1 1 1 1 1 so there are 5 datas starting from LSB all the way towards the MSB where all these five uh, most LSB bits are equal to ones and the remaining bits are equal to zeros okay and this is the type of uh, conversion that gets converted when you try to convert a binary data into a thermometer coded data. So now these data has to be applied onto these inputs right yeah so in a way we need a very large structure so clearly we need the number of elements of this a naught just for n that is equal to 3 would then be equal to 7 okay so we need a uh, seven stru such structures of inverted triangles okay which are the reference elements and uh, let me just start with uh, c7 C6, C5, C4, C3, C2. Yeah, so I should I could have started with C not here. Sorry for uh, 
for this mistake. I think uh, I'm just yeah. Hope that I've done this numbering proper. Okay. Yeah. So basically, there are seven elements of it, and each of these elements has to be added uh, based on the these uh, thermometer datas, and you get the output directly based on these additions of these A naughts. So, hope that you are clear with this uh, and uh, my drawing is always as bad. Okay. Yeah, so I am just trying to tap output as x of a. Yeah. So, now let us apply these datas here and we know that uh, when we apply these datas, uh, obviously I will not get anything out of the first uh, a naught because the value of this a naught is multiplied by a value that is equal to 0. And even the second one will also be multiplied by a factor that is equal to 0. All the remaining bits has to be added up, right. So, let me just begin with this uh, C4, which is basically uh, the fourth bit position. I am just adding this A0 and uh, the third bit, the second bit, and, uh, and this is nothing but collectively it is 5 times that of A0. And uh, since we know that this value of A naught is equal to 0.625 LSB, when this gets multiplied by a factor of 5, it becomes 3.125 volt. Okay. It is the same value that we would get uh, out of this architecture for a data that for a binary data that is equal to 101. Okay. So now let us move on to the final discussion of uh, the merits and demerits of this uh, particular architecture. So, the total sum of all the weights again will add up to the same number okay. as we had for binary weighted, the total sum of all weights when we add them together is again equal to 2 to the power n minus 1 okay. and though there is a number of binary weights that we just added up. And uh, when all the digital data is, uh, when all the uh, thermometer coded data are all equal to 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay. And uh, here in this case, one of the greatest advantages that we have is that the matching between each individual element is, is, is much more simpler. Okay. So, here there is no stringent requirement to be more specific within, to be constrained within a specific value. Okay. And that we will just try to uh, feel when we discuss about the current steering DAC. But as of now, uh, this is having a greatest advantage that the matching of individual element is become far far simpler and uh, in short uh, the transfer function of this thermometer coded is always monotonic okay so uh, this is something uh, I just want to emphasize here that the transfer function of the thermometer coded architecture is monotonic. Okay. Yeah. So, and finally, uh, the DNL and the INL errors uh, in these cases are, uh, are much far better than uh, having this INL and DNL in the case of a binary version. So, uh, I'm just just like that. I'm framing this word, but uh, we'll try to uh, have a real feel of it when we discuss about the current steering DAC. Okay. Yeah. So now you might wonder that does it not have any disadvantage? Obviously, when you go for a thermometer coded, it has a disadvantage. One of the major disadvantage in this case is the thermometer code. Okay. You need to convert a binary data into a thermometer code, right? So that ends up being a very large numbers okay and uh, so as the number of uh, n becomes higher then the number of thermometer code that has to be created will be much larger and in short the routing that is required inside this encoder 
is also becomes complicated when you go for fabrication because you have to involve with lot of uh, wires in order to connect these datas. Okay. So, that is something that one has to consider when the value of n becomes quite larger just because uh, the, the conversion between this n to 2 to the power n grows somewhere exponentially. Okay. So, it, it grows exponentially and due to which uh, the circuit becomes too complex. Okay. And there are certain solutions that has come up. Now one of the solution could be uh, using this encoder in a kind of pipeline structure. Okay. Anyhow, we will not talk much about it, but there are certain works that have been uh, used to, to reduce this drawback and one such uh, method that is used to reduce the complexity of an encoding structure is nothing but the pipeline architecture. Okay. Yeah. So, now let me uh, begin with the discussion of uh, current steering DAC. Uh, And yeah. So now, in this case, the first type of uh, architecture that we are going to discuss is basically ba based on. Uh, the thermometer coded architecture. Okay. So, this thermometer coded architecture in short uses a unit current source. So, which means that uh, each of the uh, reference element uh, will have a same weight and that weight we call it as a unit current. Okay. Yeah. So, let me just title it. So, the circuit, uh, the circuit seems to be pretty simple. I will just copy the circuit and then I uh, will just paste it here. Uh, there is only a uh, very few elements that are utilized in building this circuit. Uh, one is this current element, uh, which is the current sources, and there is an appropriate switch that switches between the uh, ground and the output node. Okay. So, so, the addition happens just because these current sources are being uh, Plays in parallel, and we know that the currents, when they are in parallel, they add up to a total current. Okay, so the structure is pretty simple, but certainly there is something that we need to note here: is that uh, the number of bits. Okay, so these these are the data that is uh, returned in terms of a thermometer. Okay, so the form of data that I have between this d of uh, two to the power n minus two to all the way to d naught is in thermometer coded form. And one could clearly see that uh, the data bit is not equal to uh, or the number of bits that I have here is not equal to uh, what is known as 2 to the power n minus 1. Okay. So, something I have to emphasize here that this number of bits that I have here is not equal to 2 to the power n minus 1. the drives okay but rather it is equal to 2 to the power n minus 2 okay yeah so you might wonder like where does this one of the bit has gone off uh, basically what happens is that uh, in this case uh, uh, when all the digital data are equal to 0, 0, 0, uh, we do not want any of the switches to get activated. Okay? And due to which uh, the current has to be equal to 0 and uh, in a way that helps us to reduce one of the bit uh, out of this uh, thermometer coded form. Okay? That is something that we need to uh, keep in our mind that uh, we uh, say for example for n equals to 3. We know that this form that I have uh, a second uh, yeah. 
So in this case, uh, when this binary data that is equal to 000, we need uh, this data to be converted and being utilized for conversion. But as we know that these uh, data, uh, when we apply to this architecture, will lead to a current I out that is equal to zero, right? And we don't want any of the switch to get operated to switch from the node of ground to the node of output, okay? And so let me just try to uh, explain with the picture. And due to which uh, there is a reduction of one uh, place, okay? That, that's, a, uh, that's a small subtle uh, chain that we have, okay? So in this case, uh, rather than uh, having seven for n that is equal to zero, we basically ended up having the number of bits that is equal to six, okay? And that's certainly a small bit of difference uh, that one has to observe when we try to build a current steering DAC architecture. So now, uh, let me just uh, talk about the other architecture, which is the, sorry, which has been built by making use of this binary weighted uh, structure. Okay. So as you would have guessed, uh, in this case, each of these uh, current sources are being binary weighted, okay? So each of these sources. And uh, the data that we are trying to drive this architecture is basically the binary data, okay? There is no need of any um, conversion from, from some, uh, like from binary code to some other form of uh, digital code. It's, uh, it's directly the data can be applied to the architecture and one could get the output directly here. Okay? So the binary, uh, of data is used, okay, yeah. So, and as you could uh, see that, uh, again, when we total up, yeah, so, yeah. So when we really go for the number of counts of the uh, current sources, uh, number of bits or number of uh, current sources, even though the each individual current sources are binary weighted, the number of current sources that is required is basically equal to equal to two uh, like n minus one. Okay, so again there is a reduction of one bit just because uh, yeah, uh, I, I guess uh, it's not n minus one; it's just n. Okay, so there there are basically n number of uh, uh, current sources are required when we when you try to build a current steering architecture. Uh, which are built by making use of this binary weighted uh, reference sources, okay? And there is no need of uh, thermometer encoder structure for this architecture. Yeah. And now let us talk about uh, the advantage that we have when we go for a current steering architecture. Now this is an architecture that's, that's been labeled as a high speed uh, architecture, just because uh, you see that the currents, uh, like since uh, no output buffers are necessary to drive a residue load, just because we are having the reference elements as uh, uh, current sources, um, these reference elements can can work faster or the charges can move faster. And then uh, when you apply to, to a load, it can, uh, like you would get an output conversion directly, okay? So this is something that is used uh, in a very high speed application. And, um, but when we talk about the other uh, end, that is the disadvantage. Uh, the precision that is required for the current sources specifically to build these binary weighted structure has to be well matched, okay? The precision by which each of these current elements, each of these reference elements are being built has to be uh, built with high degree of uh, accuracy, okay? And also, now whenever the, you try to switch from uh, a data, or, uh, from a specific data to a different data, what happens is that uh, these current sources has to be switched from two different nodes. And uh, when these switching happens uh, simultaneously, say for example, you are trying to uh, step down one of the current sources to ground, the other way is that you are trying to step up the other current source to, to the I out, okay? So these kind of transitions in general will create some sort of glitches, okay? And since because we are involved with a huge current sources, uh, 
which could be even here because we just add these current sources in parallel and these glitches when you apply through a residue load it gets magnified by a very large value in terms of a voltage okay so this is something that one has to be concerned when we uh, use this architecture for a DAC okay because uh, a huge value of voltage will uh, obviously uh, ruin the subsequent uh, circuit structure that follows uh, your analog output uh, just because these glitches can create a voltage which is greater than uh, the, the nominal uh, working voltage okay so there is something that a proper isolation has to be done just before you connect the output to the uh, next level of uh, circuitry yeah that could be one of the disadvantages that we have and now uh, let me talk about the errors okay so let us talk about the mismatch errors that exist for a unity current source architecture or the thermometer coded architecture so the unit current source architecture just because we use these references reference elements as equal okay so so there is a one more name for this a thermometer coded architecture is nothing but a unit current source architecture okay so first let us address the inl and dnl errors on these architecture based on the mismatches across these uh, current elements and uh, followed by which uh, we'll discuss about the dnl and the inl errors for the binary weighted architecture yeah so let us uh, let me just try to copy this let me just try to step down uh, a bit So it is for this architecture we, we are going to talk about how a mismatch in these uh, elements could impact your INL and DNL errors okay or how does the INL and DNL errors in turn defines the position of these uh, current sources okay so So uh, let us take a, a specific value of i. Okay, so the number we know that it starts from k that is equal to one and uh, k that is equal to two to the power n minus one. Just because I have offsetted these expressions here, rather than offsetting from or rather than starting from a value of zero, I have started from the value of one, so that the number starts from one all the way to two to the power n minus one. Okay, yeah. So now when we add a specific set of current and say for example the index value of this number that I have listed is equal to k where the number can take any of these index values between a value of 1 all the way to, to, the, to a value which is equal to 2 to the power n minus 1 okay so let me use an index uh, label as k and for that I could write a general expression of i k and that value can be anything okay and that could be returned as k times uh, that of uh, the i value okay um, uh, maybe I'm, am I right with this oh, okay yeah okay so in this case the k could represent one of the current source okay and as I said it can be referencing to any of the data that I have and if at all if I am talking about a specific number which falls between the value of uh, between the uh, the current source which is labeled as 2 to the power n minus 1 to the current source which is labeled as 1 okay it can be any number including this 1 and 2 to the power n minus 1 and that current source has some sort of mismatch and I represent that mismatch as delta times that of uh, ik okay uh, uh, I hope that you are clear with this um, so and the value of k can range from as i said uh, can range from 1 2 3 all the way to 2 to the power n minus 1 okay and this is the number that can range and uh, so here we are going to assume few things in order to uh, exactly compute the inl and dnl error errors okay 
So, we, we are going to assume that when we sum each individual current sources, where each individual current sources have a specific mismatch in it. Okay? So, each of these i value is having some specific delta i or specific mismatch associated with it. Okay? And when we sum all of these specific uh, delta i's along the along across all of these uh, current sources, the summation of this delta or the mismatch error rounds up to a value of 0. This is something that we are going to use in order to compute the worst case condition for INL and DNL errors. Okay. Yeah. And also, uh, we are going to assume that one half of the circuit. Okay. So, say for example, uh, I have uh, n that is equal to 3. So, we know that uh, we need basically 6 current sources. And let us assume that uh, the three current sources has uh, positive values of delta k and the next three uh, current sources have negative values of delta k. Okay? And uh, so, what I really mean is that uh, when we add these positive values of delta k, they add up to a very large value of delta k. Okay? So, so there, there is something like uh, this delta k can be different from each other and uh, say for example, an error value of 0.1 here an error value of uh, 0.05 here and the next uh, bit position can have an error value of, of delta i that is equal to uh, 0.2 or something. Okay? So, when we add these uh, errors, we end up having a specific value which is equal to, I guess I, I said it, it is 0.2 here. So, it would be like 0.35. Okay? So, so, when we add them together, the total delta i k will become something like a total summation of these errors. Okay? So, there is obviously some sort of error that has been added in order to create this number. Now, so this adds up to a maximum value of 0.35 uh, delta i. Similarly, on the other end, where the remaining next higher uh, bits of current sources, when we add their delta k's, we have to end up with a value of minus 0.35 of delta i. So, which means that when we sum all of these quantities of delta i, we end up having a result which is equal to 0. Okay? So, it is something like that we are going to assume in order to compute the value of uh, INL and DNL errors out of this. Okay? So, now uh, let us uh, go for the worst condition by choosing the mid scale value and uh, this is going to be a generic. So, due to which I am going to take an i out because we know that uh, a mid value of this i out is nothing but is equal to k that is equal to 1 and all the way to 2 to the power n minus 1. Okay? So, in this case, the n is subtracted by a factor of 1. It is not 2 to the power n, the whole has been subtracted by a value of 1. Okay? So, in this case, uh, what I really mean is that when the value of n is equal to 3, then we are actually summing up to a value of, of k that runs from 2 to the power 2. Okay? So, this is the factor that we have and uh, we have this i plus delta i k and we have to sum all these lower order bits in order to create that sum value and that is equal to uh, 2 to the power n minus 1. So, n minus 1 is powered into i plus 2 to the power n minus 1 which are being added to delta i k and the summation of this delta i k uh, is taken as uh, delta i max. Okay, just because we are we are trying to add up only these uh, current sources and we add them together, they form the maximum uh, mismatch errors, and that is what has been reflected as uh, two to the power n minus one into delta i max. Okay. Yeah. So you know that for the mid value, the ideal value is basically equal to 2 to the power n minus 1. So, this is uh, labeled as i out ideal, but what is non ideal is this particular factor, uh, which I write it as uh, 2 to the power n minus 1 into delta i max. Now, based on this, uh, let us try to evaluate uh, the INL error. So, I am just go going to utilize this uh, 
expression to create the INL worst case error here. Okay, yeah. So we know that this INL is basically uh, the actual output uh, minus the ideal output current. Uh, at that particular node, uh, I would end up having a maximum value just by having the difference of uh, the actual I out minus the ideal I out should give us, should result in this particular quantity which is labeled as the NL max. Okay? So, it is 2 to the power n minus 1 into delta I max. So, we also know that uh, we have to keep the INLs or DNL errors has to be less than half the LSD. Okay? Uh, this is something the standard that we need to follow. So, in this case, uh, having half the value of LSV means that we know that each LSV is a current source I whose value is I and half of its value has to be maintained. Okay? So, this is the value that we have to uh, place across this INL max. So, what we do is that we, we just want this INL max to be less than or at least equal to this value of I divided by 2. Okay? So, let me plug in this particular quantity such so that the error will be smaller than this value of I divided by 2. Okay? So, now in a way that we can just identify what is the maximum delta I error that one could have in these circuits such that uh, so, so, such that when we add a lower order uh, number of bits up to the max maximum of half the value of it, we end up having a specific constraint on this value that value that these uh, lower order bits can have or lower order current sources can have. Okay? Yeah. So, so it's, a, it's a simple uh, summation quantity or and let us take the worst condition by equating this to be equal to to, to this equal symbol and uh, we have this 0.5 times that of i divided by this quantity which is 2 to the power n minus 1. Okay. So, again uh, just because it is I should have had this i by 2 as it is. So, since because there is a factor 2 one could write it as i divided by 2 to the power n. Okay. Now, you clearly you could see that the maximum INL, uh, sorry, the, the maximum delta I that the circuit can possess is basically constrained by this quantity that is equal to I divided by 2 to the power n. Okay? And as the value of n becomes larger and larger, then the maximum added version of these uh, delta I's up to the mid value has to be smaller than this quantity. Okay? So, so this particular expression illustrates the difficulty of using this architecture at high resolutions. Okay? So, high resolution in the sense when the value of n becomes large. So, now let us look uh, for the DNL error. Now, we know that this DNL error is defined as uh, uh, step height differences. right? So, uh, it is uh, the actual step height minus the ideal step height. And the worst case condition is that uh, we need to find uh, a step height which is far away from this ideal step height. Okay? And uh, since because uh, the step height works in terms of unit level, the ideal step height in general is nothing but i, okay, the unit size of your current source, and uh, we need to match up to to a particular value of index i that has a large difference between this height and the ideal step height, okay, and that is what we just want to uh, try to uh, map it. Okay. Now, uh, which means that we have to go and see what is the difference between each individual current sources. Okay, so maybe I just, uh, I guess. I can just drop this picture again. Okay. So, in this case, uh, one has 
to identify what is the difference between these two uh, current sources and one has to identify across which among these two current sources we have a large difference okay and that is the maximum I dnl error that one could have and due to which uh, one could write an expression of uh, of this as i out of x okay of a specific uh, k factor or x factor here minus the previous bit is x minus 1 okay so in this case uh, probably i could have uh, there, there are too many notations that i have here so in this case say for example x is here the x minus 1 would be the sorry uh, let me use this one as my x so this would be my x minus 1 position okay so that difference should end up having a very large quantity okay and uh, that difference is nothing but the actual height okay the difference of x minus x minus 1 gives us the actual step height and due to which uh, it is written as okay so in this case uh, the k is nothing but the current source uh, or the ideal value okay and this delta i would represent the uh, the largest value of uh, differences okay so so which means that uh, when we discuss about here we could see that there is a particular quantity value of 0 0.2 uh, 0 0.05 and 0 0.5 one okay so among these three data it is 0.2 is the data that has the largest difference from its ideal value right so it is only that particular value that we are trying to fix for this difference okay when we compare ourselves with the previous data okay. so uh, i guess you could follow it far better than my explanation so it is something like a value that you have uh, where the difference between this current source and this current source seems to be a very large okay uh, or the or the or the mismatch differences becomes very large and that mismatch quantity has to be large between the neighboring elements okay yeah so hope that you are clear with this and uh, right now in order to compute the the dnl uh, of the maximum value uh, we know that this quantity gives us the actual step height and this quantity is nothing but the ideal step height which is just the i factor okay and this is nothing but the uh, error term okay and that is equal to delta i max of dnl okay and we want to keep this error to be uh, less than or equal to 0.5 times zero of lsb and that is equal to i divided by 2 and uh, clearly we could see that uh, the dnl error is imposing a very uh, loose constraint on this uh, delta I factor when we compare the constraint that is posed by the dnl uh, by, by the inl error okay so in the case of an inl error we found that uh, the the difference or, or the, the mismatch that a current source can possess is very limited or very, very much constrained by a factor of i divided by 2 to the power n whereas the dnl error does not constrain too much on the uh, on the mismatch uh, quantity that each of the current sources can have okay so so in the case of a, a thermometer coded architecture it is the inl error that constrains the uh, the accuracy or, or constrain yeah uh, the mismatch value of these uh, current sources that it can have okay yeah so now we just move on to the next one which is the uh, binary weighted uh, architecture uh, let me just be quick just because i'm just going beyond uh, the prescribed time of 1 1 hour uh, yeah oh, let me uh, try to bring up the circuit uh, configuration Oh, sorry uh, in the place of copying uh, this guy I copied uh, the 
thermometer coated structure. Yeah, so this is the binary weighted uh, current steering DAC architecture and uh, probably this analysis might be different from what we have analyzed for a thermometer coated architecture. So again, uh, we are involved in computing the DNL and the NL errors and clearly one could see that each of these reference elements that we have are binary weighted which means that uh, the one that it has at the top the MSB and the one that we have as the, the next bit from the uh, MSB quantity will have a large difference once the value of n goes beyond a particular value. Okay? So which means that uh, say for example uh, uh, we have an n that is equal to 4 then uh, uh, we would have a, an i uh, 2 i 4 i and the next one would be an 8 i. Okay? So certainly this 8 i is something which is a very large value compared to this uh, 4 times that of i or even the summation of each individual i's will actually sum up to a value of 7 times that of i then compared to this 8 i. Okay? So it is certainly uh, there, there is something that we need to consider uh, when we try to analyze the mismatch among these current sources. Okay? So in this case let us assume that the MSB bit which is 2 to the sorry which is d n minus 1 okay? uh, has the maximum positive error. Okay? So, so I have this quantity uh, which is the uh, ideal value which is 2 to the power n minus 1 times of i and it also has a delta i which is a positive max. Okay? Then the summation of each individual current source that we have, okay, they sum up to have a value of delta i max, okay? but this delta i seems to be a negative value. So, uh, so what I really mean is that this is again they sum up to the same value of uh, delta i for what we had before for the MSB bit, but, but, what, but the nature of this delta i, if this is a positive quantity, then this is supposed to be a negative quantity. Now, why we need this uh, positive and negative nature is that when we try to sum up all of these delta i's as we had before, where the k starts from, uh, maybe uh, I have to start from zero to n minus 1 okay yeah so when we just add up these delta i they have to sum up to a value of of 0 okay and that could happen only when i consider that one of the current source which is the msv bit has the maximum quantity and the remaining current sources when we add them together they result in a value of delta i that is negative so that when we add this set of current values of mismatches to this current value of mismatch they add together to end up having a result of 0. Hope that have convinced uh, in a way that uh, you have understood. Okay? Yeah. So now that we just want to calculate the uh, INL max. Okay? So now in this how one could analyze the INL max is by just by considering this particular quantity. Okay? Just by considering the MSB quantity one could evaluate the INL max. Now, I am just writing this INL max to be equal to 2 to the power n minus 1 and we have this i but this i is also being accomplished by a delta i which is a maximum quantity. Okay? So it is not uh, it is not an ideal component but uh, rather there is a mismatch associated with it and thus that mismatch is written as delta i. And uh, that delta i is being magnified by the uh, binary component, which is a binary weight, which is two to the power n minus one. Okay? Yeah. So this is the quantity that we have, and uh, it has to be subtracted from the ideal value. Okay? And we know that the ideal value is nothing but uh, two to the power n minus one, the binary weight of this ideal component of i. Clear? So certainly these differences would cancel this quantity from this quantity and we end up having this uh, delta i max as the INL. And we want this uh, delta i max uh, or INL max to be less than or equal to 0 0.5 times that of the uh, LSB quantity. Okay? So in a way we end up having a result which is i divided by 
So basically in this case uh, one could see that uh, the INL is not making so much of constraint on this uh, mismatch error that each individual current sources can have or specifically the, uh, the, the sorry, uh, specifically the uh, MSV bit can have, okay, yeah. So, so we have some sort of leverage uh, in this particular, sorry, I forgot one important quantity which is 2 to the power n minus 1, yeah, I forgot about this, yeah. So this one and uh, due to which uh, we end up having a value of i uh, that is severely been constrained by 2 to the power n and that gives us this delta i max of i n. So hope that uh, it is clear. So this is one of the constraints that has been uh, provided by the INL quantity and now we will just talk about the DNL quantity. Now in this case uh, during the computation of this DNL uh, we need to measure the step heights, right. So we know that uh, the height at this particular point and the height at this particular point will, ha will be the maximum quantity. Uh, the reason for this is that uh, we know that the height that I would attain for a value of bits that are equal to, uh, say for example, I am having an n factor that is equal to uh, 4, okay. And uh, we know that each of these n factors which are uh, away from this MSB bit will add up to a value which is equal to 7 times that of i, okay. Whereas the next one will have uh, 8 times that of i and the difference of these two ideal values will be equal to 1. So this is the step height that we normally measure for a DNL, right, yeah. So in this case, since because we assume that uh, we have uh, a maximum error across this MSV bit which is labeled as something like delta i and uh, again the summation of these quantities, uh, I think 8 here. Yeah, I, I think uh, I'm just, uh, let me try to write the equation rather than uh, bringing in this particular uh, example, uh, sorry for that. Uh, let me just first try to uh, make you to understand through the uh, equation and then uh, later I'll just get back to this value of n of 4 and then we'll try to discuss about it, okay. Yeah. So the worst case condition that could happen um, when we uh, try to switch from a value where MSB is equal to 0 where all of the remaining bits are equal to 1, 1, 1 and when you switch from this value to a value where MSB is equal to 1 but whereas all other remaining bits all the way to the LSB is equal to 0. So whenever this kind of switching is happening then this results in a maximum error or this results in a, in a change in the voltage of uh, mid value, okay. So in, in a way what I am trying to say is that. Uh, Um, say for example, I have 7 i and uh, over here it is 8 i and uh, so it is something like when, uh, when we have a data of 0, 1, 1, 1, we have a 7 i as its data and when you have 1, 0, 0, 0, we have 8 i is the data, okay. So it is clearly uh, the midway between the maximum and the minimum, okay. So the maximum is nothing but when we have all those uh, bits as 1, 1, 1. So that would end up having uh, a value which is equal to 15 i and the, the, the minimum value is basically when we have all these uh, bits as equal to uh, 0, 0, 0, where, wherein we will have a value of i that is equal to 0 or i out that is equal to 0, okay. So it is somewhere the mid place is here, okay, where uh, we are working on a bit where MSB is equal to 0 and where all the remaining bits are equal to 1, 1, 1 and when we switch from this data to this data, we are actually falling across this uh, mid regime, okay. So you know, I, I hope that you are clear. Uh, basically when you, when you try to read out the difference between the 15 i to a 0 and the mid value would be the exact half of it, we end up having a value which is equal to 7.5, okay. So, so this mid value is happening just because whenever uh, like it is just a mirror of these two. Uh, uh, or the inverted mirror of these two expressions. Uh, I, I guess it is rather difficult for me to explain in this way but I am trying to explain in such a way that uh, you could understand but otherwise uh, we will just 
uh, meet up in the uh, WebEx meeting. Okay. Yeah. So let me just try to quickly uh, cover up this DNL uh, error. Right now, uh, I just talk about this DNL max as 2 to the power n minus 1 times that of i and we also know that there is a delta i quantity which has its maximum error minus the remaining 2 to the power n minus 1. Okay, So we have to sum up these two quantities where uh, we have 2 to the power n minus 1 minus 1. Okay? So this is nothing but the factor 7 that we are talking about here and this is nothing but the factor 8 that we are talking here. Okay? And the summation of each uh, factors will have this uh, value of i and since as I said uh, we are going to assume that these current sources will have negative values of mismatches whereas the MSB will have the positive value of mismatch and due to which I have this 